Welcome back. So here it is. This is the one that you've been asking for. Even before I started this channel, I've gotten PMs asking about how I do my cardstock miniatures. So once and for all, here are my methods laid plain and bare for you. All right, here I have Adobe Photoshop CS2 up. So we're going to do a new document and we'll make this eight and a half by 11 inches at 300 pixels per inch. And we will fill this with white, so that's alt backspace. And zoom in a bit, go to the top left corner. So this is our workspace here. Now another new document. This will be quarter inch wide and one and three eighths of an inch tall. And we'll fill this with uh, red, control A, control C to copy, control V to paste. And we're done with that. And let's name this layer gauge. Another new document one inch wide, an eighth of an inch tall, and fill that with black. And select all, copy, and paste. And we'll call this tab. All right, now we need a figure. So let's go to Google Image, and today we'll do an orc. Image, and you want to find something with an easy background to remove. Here's one with all white, high resolution. This looks good. So let's uh, copy image, Photoshop, new document it automatically puts in the size of whatever is on the clipboard so that's nice and we'll paste it in so now we're gonna use the magic wand tool and select all the white space around him and delete it now there's some white space in here and there's some white space there and then there's some this ground at his feet so we're gonna use the lasso tool and manually remove that there all right, select all, copy, and paste. Close that, we don't need it anymore. Now we're gonna call this, uh, call it orc. And we're gonna press Control T to start a transform. Hold on to shift as you move this corner handle, that'll keep his proportions constrained. And place the feet at the bottom of the gauge, so right about there. If the feet in the image are not at the same height, I sort of split the distance, so right about there and then scale them up so that his eyes are at the top of the gauge. This will make the paper mini basically the same size as a game workshop or a reaper mini. All right, and now we're done with the gauge, so we can delete that. So here's the orc, and my printer prints kind of dark, so I'm gonna bump up the saturation a little bit, as well as the lightness just a hair, and that's good right there. Okay, magic wand tool, control A to select all, and hold alt as you click the white space. Now we just have the figure selected. All right, menu, select, modify, expand by 10 pixels. Okay, control shift N for a new layer and alt backspace to fill that layer with black. And we'll call this layer shadow and we'll move that behind the figure. This gives us a nice thick black line to cut around, a lot, a lot of room to play, a little margin for error. Take the tab layer, move it up so it's just at his feet, and then notice the white space between the legs. You can cut that out with an X-Acto knife later on, but I'm not going to bother with that, so I'm just going to go to the shadow layer and fill some black in right there. There we go. All right, last step, get the line tool, one pixel wide, and we're going to draw it just over the head, close, close to the head. Hold on to shift as you draw, that'll make it go perfectly straight. And so there's that. So from here, we're going to merge all four layers, and this is our figure. We'll call this uh, figure. So now duplicate that layer, move it up a bit, menu edit, transform, flip vertical. And now the key is to make these lines match up exactly. Not overlap, but, but right next to each other. Photoshop actually snaps into the place. You can see it snap, so that's nice. Other editors probably have a one pixel nudge if you use the arrows on the keyboard, so you can do that to look and validate that in fact it's right where it needs to be. So then press uh, Control E to merge. I didn't mention a moment ago, Control E merges the layer down. And this is ready to print. So here's an orc. And if you want to make a whole blister sheet of them, just duplicate the layer, move it over duplicate the layer, move it over, etc. You can put as many as you can fit on the sheet. Just remember to leave a quarter inch gap on the sides for your printer, which most likely has a gutter of a quarter inch. So this is ready to print, 
and we will go to that step now. So now, onward to the crafting table. First, cut out the figure. Then, fold exactly along the black line. Be very accurate with this, as any small error will propagate. Next, take any cardstock. I would use anything thinner than chipboard, but even that'll work if you have good enough cutting tools. This is the backing to a comic book sleeve. Use a liberal amount of glue stick to attach the figure to the cardstock. Next, take some clear packing tape and cover the figure. This adds some gloss, protects the paper, and also helps the colors stand out. Now it's time to cut. I use scissors, but I have also used an X-Acto knife before. Try and get close to the figure and take as little advantage of that thick black line as possible. That's your safety only. Now, use a black sharpie and blacken the exposed edge of the figure. As for the base, there are two methods that I use. For a square base, take some dollar store foam board and cut out a 1 inch square. You may want to do 1 inch light or even 15 16 of an inch, just in case your tiles weren't perfect. Then, mark exactly halfway across this square and score the foam, but do not cut through the paper on the other side. Peel off the paper from this side and then fold the square in half. If you didn't score very deep, it may crack, and that's fine. Now, ensure your hot glue gun is fully hot, and apply a thin bead of hot glue in the crack. Quickly insert the paper mini, and quickly unfold the base, and hold in this position while the glue cools. This was the purpose of that 1 8 inch tab, to have material to bite into the glue but still have the figure's feet be visible at the surface of the base. Hot glue a penny or washer to the bottom. This will both reinforce the base to keep it straight and add a lot of weight, making the miniature bottom heavy and much easier to deal with at the game table. In fact, you can drop it from any height and 99% of the time it will stand itself up. From here, Apply a thick coat of white glue to the base, not watered down. Flock with a couple of pebbles, and then sand. The other method for the base is the one I prefer and have recently switched over to. For this method, you do not need the 1 8 inch tab. So cut it off or don't bother including it in the first place when doing all your Photoshop work. You can purchase one inch washers from any hardware store. You may wish to trace and cut out a cardstock circle to glue to the washer to cover the hole, but I didn't bother with that here. Anyway, apply a thin bead of hot glue across the middle and quickly place the miniature in it. Hold there, very steady, for a good 20 seconds. I know how this looks in the video and the pictures, but trust me, after you make one, you'll be surprised at how sturdy this connection really is. Again, cover the base with a healthy layer of white glue, and then flock with pebbles and sand. For both bases, the paint scheme is pretty simple. Base it completely in black, and then dry brush with a gray. I used slate gray here. Okay, here's some example. Here's some uh, skeletons. Again from Google Image. You can see the detail really comes out. I think the difference between 100 and 200 DPI is extremely noticeable. 200 and 300 
still noticeable. Anything above 300, not so much. So these are all printed at 300, and that is the reason that uh, many of you who have PM'd me saying, well, how, how do they look so photorealistic? That's the reason. You always want to scale things down, not up. If you scale them up, you'll introduce noise. This is my player's, my player character's party, and I color-coded them to make it easier for my players to know which one was theirs. It's pretty simple. Dark color underneath, and then dry brush with a lighter version of it. And then uh, I think coming up, yeah, we have uh, some large miniatures. So there's an Odiug, uh, a couple water elementals, and a Naga. I do not use two inch washers for these. This is just a, a two inch chipboard circle that I use a compass to measure out and cut by hand. Two inch washers are pretty expensive. Uh, these aren't done yet, obviously. They're not flocked, and I haven't traced the edges. But um, you can see you can get some, there's a mini for scale, you can get some good results. And here's the Naga that I've showed off before. The skulls there are its victims, those are just beads from Michaels. So is that gemstone there. Nagas are historically very greedy. Um, it's got good weight to it. That's uh, gold glitter with a Swarovski crystal. And then that necklace down there is a, a costume jewelry earring. And so I used that in a recent adventure. And then here is uh, an adult dragon. So this is a three inch base because it is huge. And this is a bronze dragon. There's a skeleton for scale. But technique is exactly the same for larger bases for doing the squares. It's just foam board. Looks like I lost a penny there, but that guy's got a good weight. Handles pretty well. So, the, again, the big ones are no different for the technique. And here's the big collection all at once. Uh, of course, you've got to have a gelatinous cube. And it's consumed a skeleton. And here's a black pudding. Um, Next to that, you can see a halfling and some other NPCs. There's a cambion, and here's the stuff we've just looked at, just for scale, and, and diorama is nice to look at. And there's a pair of white wormling dragons, so they have the medium base. A lot of this art should look familiar if you've played Pathfinder or 3.5. There's a half elf. So th this is my collection, and that's how I do cardstock miniatures. I am Wylock. Thanks for joining me.